Hey guys, what's up? Um, just want to talk to you guys about healing and how we look at healing and the misconceptions uh, that spread throughout the church by healing uh, and in general public um, opinion about healing. See, as I was growing up and I was as I was getting close to the Lord, um, it was my heart's desire that anyone that I would come across on the street would be healed. Like, see a blind man crossing the street. I, in Christ, should have the ability to walk up to that person, lay my hands on that person, and that person should receive sight. Now, in the natural mind, when I think of it, it might seem, it might seem extraordinarily incredible, but I always saw it as something very, very, very simple and normal for our Lord Jesus, because He is the Lord of creation. All things has been created through Him and by Him. Now, if He lives in us, why should it be so difficult for us to lay our hands on somebody and them receiving sight? I mean, forget that. Just, I mean, just the fact that Jesus laid his hand on Malchus and his, and his ears were restored. The fact that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. The fact that Paul raised somebody from the dead. The fact that Paul sent his anointing on 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 an handkerchief and um the numerous numerous miracles that has been recorded in the bible why should it be so difficult for us as believers um to do those now a lot of people look at miracles and signs and wonders as a gift from god yes it is a gift from god and it is something that we receive from him through the holy spirit but it is not something that's only given to a few people. The scripture says, these shall follow everyone who believes that they will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will raise the dead. They shall heal the leper and restore sight to the blind. So why is it that we feel that this calling is only for a few people? I believe it's for everyone now. It's not something that we go around showing off or it's not something that we we do for people to prove that we are superior over them. No, it is something that God gives us just as he gave Jesus Christ to prove the kingdom of God is in existence. It is something that God gives us to prove that he is the living God of the Bible. Also, it is by which we destroy the works of hell. It is by which we destroy the works of the devil. Why did Jesus come to the earth? To destroy the works of the devil, right? So, it is something that we, we receive from God by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Because when he was beaten when he received all those lashes, when they beat him so much to a point where we couldn't recognize him, at that point, the price was paid for our iniquities and our sins. The price was paid for everything that was past, present, and future. So anything we were supposed to go through was paid for. Any, any sickness that was upon us at that point for the future was already paid for so we as christians we need to believe that and we need to declare that and we need to walk in that deliverance that was paid on calvary 2000 years back now in terms of gifting in terms of us receiving it the scripture says renew your mind renew the things of your mind and we shouldn't walk in dead works anymore which means our mind should be renewed to be made similar to Jesus' mind as he walked on the earth, as he said, let your kingdom come on earth as is in heaven. So he was talking about right now and right here. He wasn't talking about a future date when he was when we were to go to heaven. 
and receive the gifts of the kingdom he was talking about right now so the kingdom of god is here right now so we need to see that we need to see in the spirit mind we need to get rid of our carnal mind we need to re remove this carnal mindset of ours and receive the things of god we need to agree with the things of god now if you were to speak to somebody who does not understand spanish in english I'm sorry, if you were to speak to somebody in English who does not understand English, he's not going to comprehend anything you're saying because he does not understand the language. So if we, as born-again Christians, we who have been re redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, if we go to God and keep asking Him in our old man who has been crucified and has been dead and buried, if we keep asking God for the things that we already have, you not you cannot expect to receive anything from God, but we have to be in agreement with with God. We have to we our mind should be in one accord with God's mind. Everything we ask for, everything we declare, everything that we say, do, perceive, think, imagine should be in line with the precepts, should be in line with the law of God. If we are not we're not going to receive any answer for it. Now, if I go to my prayer closet and repeatedly keep asking God for things I already have, He's not going to, you're not, we're not going to see any fruition to any of our efforts. You know, a lot of people think that we fast to please God. Now, yes, God is pleased in our fasting, but He was pleased with us from the time Jesus Christ died on the cross because it was paid for. Everything was paid for on the cross. When he said that it is finished, it was indeed finished. There was nothing we could do to add on to what Jesus did because he was the perfect sacrifice. Everything he did, everything that Jesus did when he was born, from the time he was born, and he lived his life to the point of death. He was perfect. He was God and man. He did everything as as a man would have done. Every weakness of a man was on him. That's why it says in the scriptures that he is our high priest, the high priest who knows us, who empathizes with us, who understands our weakness because he's been through it. So Jesus Christ paid that price on the cross, right? So there is nothing that we can do to please him because he's pleased in us because God does not see us anymore. He sees Christ in us. So when God looks at us, he sees his son in me, in you, in everyone who believes in him because that's the price that was paid on the cross. The precious blood of the lamb that was slain his blood is so precious. It is so precious. It was the most valuable thing that heaven gave up for us. So guys, as I was saying, fasting is good, but it is not to please God as much as it is to tell our body, to tell our carnal nature, listen, you are my slave. I am not your slave. You do what I tell you to do. The same way we have to tell our mind, listen, I'm going to pray for this person and he's going to be healed. I'm going to obey what God told me to do. And God will deliver that person. Now, you might not see it right away. You might pray for a thousand per people and you might not see healing, but healing will come. As long as you're obedient, as long as you follow what God told you to do, God will do the rest. Right? So healing is for now healing is for today there is an awakening in the church god is waking up his children he's pouring out his spirit he's giving them a passion for people evangelism is not a gift my dear brothers and sisters evangelism is a revelation that you receive that god loves people beyond anything can you imagine the god of this universe this is something i really sometimes i have a hard time to wrap my mind around my heart believes that my mind again the carnal nature that's in my mind goes against it the god who created everything if you look up into the sky and see all those millions of stars as much as the eye can see right and we know the galaxies 
for expanding. We know the limitless galaxy and everything that God created. Just look at the sun. The sun that rises in the morning in the east. Look at the sun and understand the magnificence of that of that star that provides light, which is millions of light, millions of millions of miles away. The God who created that is obsessed by us. He is so obsessed by us. Every thought, everything, every every pattern of his imagination is for our good. Because Jesus said that if you have seen me, you have seen God. For I and him are one. So if Jesus came down and he loved everybody that he saw and touched even his enemies to the point of death where he asked God to forgive those who were crucifying him. If Jesus prayed for them and if Jesus cried out to God for their forgiveness and he healed everyone that he saw, then it is the will of God that everyone should be healed. Now, a lot of things that are, happen in the spiritual realm is not as it happens in the physical realm. So when we pray for somebody and we don't see that healing, do not think for a second that it is not the will of God to heal that person. Forget about his sin nature. Forget about the fact that that person might not be a believer. That does not matter. What matters is that it is the will of God to heal that person. Because when we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And God has put everything on him underneath his fit and he is above all principalities and rules of this world but for he had condemned them on the cross right so believe that it is the will of god to heal that person even if you don't see it in your natural eye you tell that person that you're growing in what this gift and you're growing in this calling and you pray for them later on you remember them i have come across a lot of people that i prayed for and i remember remember then for them and I pray for them later on so long story short friends just believe that healing is for now believe that God is transforming you he's 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 maturing you he is he's leading you from glory to glory and and want the things of God want the things that will destroy hell and let's all live to destroy hell for a living thank you guys